Hi, welcome to the explainable AI course. In this particular lecture, let's look at how we can implement line for text based data. So the data set that we are using is uh, Quora data set. So there are a lot of questions on the platform Quora and some of the questions are insincere, um, like just for the spamming or trolling. So this particular data set, uh, which we will use from Kaggle has uh, almost 1.3 million labeled data set in the training and almost 300,000 in the testing. And the data set is such that there are sentences and each sentence is labeled sincere or insincere, sincere for zero and insincere for one. So we'll download the data set and we'll write the code for running Lime on this data set. So firstly, we'll be building a machine learning model to make classification on the data set. And then we'll be trying to explain why a particular prediction was made. So if a particular sentence was classified as sincere, we will see using the technique of Lime, which words contributed maximum to the classification. So this is a snapshot of how the data set looks like. There are, uh, it comes as a CSV file. There are three columns, uh, the ID, the data itself, which is the sentence and target value. Target value is zero or one binary. Zero means sincere. Uh, one means uh, insincere. We'll show some examples. And um, some questions are very offensive. So of course, I will not show those questions as part of the lecture, but the data set, since it's very huge, there are a lot of offensive questions and, and not suitable for work kind of questions also within the data set. So our workflow will be, we'll first uh, download the data set, build the ML model, then test the model. And uh, using Lime, we will see how we can analyze the predictions made by the model. Essentially, if since it's a text based data set, what we are expecting is we should be able to, um, if, if a given sentence is classified as sincere or insincere, maybe there are some words if replaced by some other better choice of words, maybe the question can become from insincere to sincere. So we'll see which words carried the highest weightage in some certain particular sentences and what is the what is the fraction of that weightage. So this is what we'll be doing. So without further ado, let's uh, go into the coding. So we'll be coding using Google Colab. I'll be sharing the um, Colab, Colab notebook with you. So just before going into the uh, Colab notebook, let's look at the data set. So you can Google Quora insincere uh, and sincere data set and Kaggle data set link will show up. So just click that. It will open the Kaggle data set. And uh, here, if you click data, that will take you to the page where you will be able to download the data set. So uh, I downloaded only the test.csv and uh, train.csv, these two CSV files. Uh, this one is 124 MB and this is 35 MB. So just uh, click the corresponding CSV and click this download button. Then once it's downloaded, you can go to the uh, Colab notebook. So this is the Google Colab notebook. I'll be sharing a copy of this notebook with you. So I have ran the cells already, which is why you see the tick mark. Maybe I can um uh, restart session i guess so the first thing is installing the the lime package so pip install lime this will take a few seconds and second is to import the required packages so we need pandas because we are dealing with csv files matplotlib seaborn for plotting uh lime is over here uh i think we are we are importing it later i guess then yeah so lime text explainer yeah this is this is from the lime package and uh scikit learn so the csv file which we downloaded had the training and test.csv so we'll uh, mostly be only using train.csv here so first let us upload the data so uh, this data folder was created by me i'll do one thing i'll delete this uh, so that i can show you from the starting and i'll also delete the file path so here is where you have to put the file path to the CSV file. Okay, so initially when you click the folder icon, it will look like this. There will only be the sample data folder. So you can right click, create new folder. And inside this folder, you can click the three dots, upload, and uh, you can upload the train and test CSV. Train and te test.csv is not needed. Uh, you just need to upload train.csv. I think it's a 135 uh, megabytes file, if I remember correctly. 
and once it's uploaded uh, open this folder click this three dots copy path and that you paste here so if it's within this data folder it will be slash content slash data slash train dot csv uh, the thing about uploading it here is it's temporary so if you disconnect the runtime and if you restart uh, again this will be gone. So if you want the CSV files to be permanently stored somewhere, you can also upload to your Google Drive. And it's, it's very easy to connect the Google Drive to your uh, Colab. So it's just a one line of code. You can Google that and easily find it out. So if it's in the Google Drive, it, you don't have to worry about the CSV files being lost. So here what we are doing is um, we are creating this data frame using Pandas. And first we'll print the shape of the train df which is the train.csv and next we'll be printing the uh, train df dot head which is the which is showing how it will look like oh i guess i have to import the packages and so here i have noticed one thing which is very uh, interesting so this shows that the train shape is seven seventy seven thousand right but actually I think this might be because this train.csv file is so huge and there might be some inconsistencies in the data. So when I when I run this again, the shape is actually changing. Let me let me try once again. Uh and the file starting. See these errors are happening. Um I guess this is mainly because in some places the CSV will have missing data or things like that. So now it is almost 120,000 but if I remember correctly there was almost a million or something rows um, let's let's open the presentation yeah um, I think it, there were there were almost 1.3 million um, training data points so it's not 130,000 so even if you subtract some inconsistent ones with you know not assigned values etc so here is NAN so uh, this line of code is, I'll come back to this, I'll come back to uh, this piece of code. But basically, um, in some rows, there are NAN values, I guess, and we have to remove those rows. But before, even before that, uh, do you see this happening when I'm running this again and again? It's increasing um, in, it's increasing slash changing its dimension. So this is very weird. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and run the code the accuracy may be compromised because all the data we are not using because the data has 1.3 million rows in the train.csv but we can come back depending on what accuracy we are getting so let's display the not a number rows nan so this is that and one more thing is there are so many offensive text in this um uh, document so in the csv file uh, it, there are so many not so suitable for work kind of text. So you may come across that when you are working with this data set because it's an actual data set taken from Quora and not all the data sets are very, mm, uh, you know, child friendly or something like that. So here we are plotting the uh, initial, the shape of the data set and also how it looks like. And here we split in this piece of code, we split the data into train and validation. So 10% goes into uh, testing and uh, remaining goes into training. Now this piece of code is for uh, printing certain data sets from the validation data. So what we can do here is, so this is the training data and I guess we should ideally also print the validation data. Let me check. So here we are printing the validation data set and we can copy paste some of the QIDs from that into this. And so the QID is the first column within the data set, if you remember. And here we'll print the question within corresponding to that QID. Um, okay, so this uh, is, is just to show how the sample data set looks like uh, within the validation data. Uh, here we are just printing that. And what we are also doing is here, you would have noticed that when we printed the validation data, the index is not 
starting from zero all the way till the final one uh, over here it's starting because the index in the training data set is being used in in the index column here in the validation data set so we need to make it um, sequential so here what we are doing is we are resetting the index and we are replacing it with zero one two three four so when we print the new validation data set you'll see that it starts from zero all the way till eighteen thousand seven hundred and sixty three so this is uh, almost 10 percentage of the um, almost 187,000. So 10 percentage of 187,000 is almost 18,700. So all look, everything looks good so far. So now what we are doing is we are you doing a TF IDF vectorization. So TF IDF vector is something TF is called term frequency and IDF is inverse document frequency. This is a very common technique used in natural language processing for um, uh, let's say you want to build a chatbot or you want to build a um, uh, an automatic response agent using natural language processing and you have a you have a document with a lot of information with in english words and things like that you can use the tf idf vectorizer to convert this into a into a format that can uh, be a numerical representation which can be read by the computer so what we are doing here is converting the uh, creating the tf idf form for the data and uh, this also will take a few seconds to run and the model that we are using here is logistic regression we can uh, change the hyperparameters as we wish um, but i think the accuracy with this current model that we are using in the logistic regression is reasonably good um, so last time i tried to run i was able to get 95 percentage accuracy so uh, we have created the model so now we are defining four parameters, accuracy, precision, recall, and uh, F1 score. So we'll be calculating that. And before calculating these four, we are also importing the corresponding libraries. And so we have already made the prediction here in the validation data set. And here we are just printing the accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. So here you can see accuracy is 94%, not bad. Uh, we have a data set of uh, 180,000 um, rows. F1 score is not too great, but also not too bad. And uh, when you look at the confusion matrix, you will understand that there are, um, you know, most of the data I think is biased towards the uh, sincere questions. Like if you if you open the data set and look at the label of most of them, most of the label meaning target is zero. So most of the questions are sincere and only very few questions are insincere. So this itself is a huge bias in the data set. So um, in general, if we look at the, let me actually plot this, if you, or, or rather this, uh, the classification report here, you can see that the precision for sincere data set is 95%, but that for insincere is 65%. So it's the insincere data set is uh, not being recognized in a, accurate way probably I, I assume this is probably because the number of insincere data points are low but that's okay we can still check out some of the examples um, so what I want to <laughs> some of the sorry some of the data sets are so offensive I, I won't even be able to show that but this this uh, row what what we are trying to print here is you know once we have the model, so we have a linear uh, logistic regression model with average 94 percentage accuracy, um, as you see uh, from the printing. Of, sorry, from the from this piece of code, accuracy is 94 percentage, and this is the confusion matrix: true, for, true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. And uh, in this uh, table, it summarizes the results. So for the sincere data set, again, F1 score is high, but for insincere, F1 score is really poor. So that is a concern. So what is going to happen is most likely when we try to make a prediction on the insincere data set, the prediction is not going to be very accurate, but that's okay. I, I don't think we have to worry about that. Um, so here, what we are doing is we are trying to print the index of rows within the validation data set with target equal to one target equal to one means uh, insincere data set so that's what we are trying to print here and um so that we can we can use some of those sincere insincere data sets as, as example in the lime uh, 
uh, explanation. So, um, why are humans so messed up? Why are the editors of TV, TV films? So you can see that many of these questions um, are are have a little bit of uh, you know trolling nature, or it's it's a little bit insensitive or something like that. So these questions are belonging to insincere category. And if you look at the row of the indices, uh, these are all the indices with insincere data set. So what I'm going to do is I'll copy paste some of them here. And uh, so here what we are doing is select a specific instance from the validation set for explanation. So I selected 82 index for, valid uh, for explanation. And then what we are doing is first create a Lime text explainer. So Lime te te text explainer with class names are sincere and insincere. So here I have created this variable as class names. I am passing that as the argument to this Lime text explainer. And if you remember, <clears throat> I have uh, imported the Lime text explainer uh, over here. So that is what we will be using. And uh, after that, we are explaining the prediction for the selected instance. So which one is the selected instance? Selected instance is this the one with the um, uh, prediction index as 82. So that we are defining as the ID X, ID X meaning the, the ID of the one which we are trying to predict and we are passing it here. And um, then what we will do is uh, we'll print the probability for this text be, to be insincere and print the probability for it to be sincere. And also what is the true class? So we can see that um, if you remember, I had mentioned that the the insincere prediction is not very good because of the lack of good data set so you can see that here so although the true class is insincere the model is predicting that this particular data point is 95 percentage sincere so this is this is a not a correct prediction right so maybe we can also try some other data points i'll try this um i don't know mostly it will still have high probability towards sincere but the class will be insincere so these are all indices of data points which are insincere but mostly the prediction will be sincere because of the bias in the data set. So our model is not a not the best possible model, but that's not the point here. The point here is to show the capability of Lime. Uh, okay, this is a very offensive thing. I would rather pick something else. So some of the data sets will be very uh, insensitive. Okay, okay. So let's let's see this. Why do Europeans lie about coming to America firsthand? Um, I don't know what's the question even is trying to imply. But anyways, it is classified as a 57 percentage probability insincere, 42 percentage sincere, and the true class is insincere. So what we can do here is we can um, remove some of these words. So Europeans has a high weightage, 0.35. America has a high weightage 0.15, Lie has 0.1 weightage. So what we can do is we can try removing some of these words from the sentences and see how the prediction probability changes, whether insincere will change to sincere or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to remove two words, Europeans and American, America. It should reduce the probability of this being predicted as insincere by significantly. Uh, I think it's because I have to use smaller case. Yeah, so original prediction was 57%. If you remember here, 57 percentage, it was insincere. So that was the original prediction. But after removing these two features, the prediction has come down to 0 0.08, which is 8.5%. 8, 8 so there is almost a reduction of 49 percentage prediction of this, this sentence as uh, you know, it was originally 57 percentage insincere and that has reduced to 8 percentage after removing these two words, Europeans and America. So this shows you the extent of uh, the influence of these two words in in the prediction of that whole sentence as insincere. So this is exactly how Lime works. Um, we can also um, <clears throat> display the explanation. Uh, as following. So prediction probability is sincere 42, insincere 58, 58 slash 57. Uh, and if we look at the sentence, this is how the words are influencing. These words, why to about first do, these words are having very little influence on the um, prediction because these are, these are generic words. These are not anything specific, but these words are kind of specific hand, lie, coming, America, Europeans. And here what it's showing is um, 
whatever bar plots are coming to the right hand side of this vertical line is words are words contributing to this being insincere and words on to the left side in the blue color is uh, contributing towards sincerity so the word coming is contributing to the sincerity of the document of the of the sentence whereas the words europeans america lie these things are contributing to the insincerity of the of the whole document or whole sentence now let's play with another one another sincere word um we can pick a random example which is not in this so i'll pick maybe index 9 because 9 should be sincere since 9 is not uh, not there in this so if i am an international student and start online web application that makes money should i start offshore account to be able to access that money in the us so this is a fairly sincere question and you can see that 99.3% it's sincere 0.006 Uh, which is 0.6 percentage is insincere, and you can see the list of words which are contributed to, which are, which contribute to making this as um, sincere or, or insincere. So here you can see the weightage of each words. What we can do is let me first plot this to get an idea which words are contributing maximum towards the sincerity. Oh, sincere is 99 percentage. I don't see. this is very interesting uh, although i see student start online what maybe what i can do is let me try this student and start if i remove will the yeah so the original prediction was 0.006 percentage insincere but after removing student and start it has become uh 1.1 percentage or 0.011 as the insincerity so insincerity has increased um i don't know why uh it's 99 percent is sincere but i'm not able to see the 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 word contributing to that here student is still showing 0.00 um perhaps let's try with another word um 12 i hope nothing offensive comes up okay um who are the best uh, sir, young surfboard shapers in australia um 1.5 percentage this is insincere and if we look at the words that are contributing to it uh, i can see that who uh, sorry um this one the but these are all generic words i guess i think young is a word that is contributing to it being sincere and here what i can do is okay actually let me plot this if i plot this we can see that best is contributing to sincere and uh, young and australia are contributing somewhat to insincere so if i remove best probably the sincerity will reduce so best is removed this i can leave as such so maybe i can just comment this okay so what i did is i removed the word best which was contributing to sincerity and then what happened was original prediction of 1.0.015 as the insincerity that has increased to 0.05 so 1.5 percentage was the original and now it is almost 5 percentage 55.3 percentage so the difference is positive so this is very interesting uh, let's look at some more insincere category because i am more interested in that i hope nothing offensive comes up so this let us run okay okay so why what made europeans compared to others much more advanced uh europeans compared to others much more advanced having nicer homes and infrastructure compared to indians or africans some of whom who still live, live in huts i guess this is a little bit uh insensitive question which is why it has a 44 percentage insincerity it still says 55 percent is sincere but the true class is insincere so that's interesting uh, so the model is making a wrong prediction here but let's look at um the words contributing to insincerity you can see that um the words contributing to insincerity are adv- indians european so if we just include indians here and europeans and if i remove the comment the insincerity should decrease so it decreased from 44 percentage to 6 percentage on the other hand if i had um so if i remove look at the this plot infrastructure live homes those are all contributing to sincerity so if i remove those words structure sincerity 
sorry it's not sincerity uh, live those two words if i remove i guess the insincere score should increase yeah so it increased from 44 to 46 percentage um so i think the way this works is if i am not wrong indians europeans if we remove uh, so the sum of indians plus europeans is something like 48 49 percentage so i don't think it okay i was i was trying to see if there is any mathematical relation between this sum of these two scores and this difference looks like i don't think they are related but anyways um this is a way in which you can see that uh lime is able to really well give you an idea what words in a sentence are contributing to it being classified as class 1 or class 2 in this particular example of cora data set the class 1 is in uh, class 0 is sincere and class 1 is insincere uh, but this same framework applies to pretty much any kind of classification so i highly recommend you to try this code and also try it out with different other data sets we can also create a bar plot showing the the sample weights so weights versus words uh, so indians europeans and africans they have positive weights they are contributing positively to insincerity towards that particular insincerity prediction and you can also see that here almost 30 uh, 29 30% age 20% indian europeans africans this is like around uh, 10% so that's exactly what you see here 10 20 and close to 30 and rest of the one the words are contributing negatively towards insincerity meaning they are contributing to sincerity so this is a beautiful example to demonstrate how lime uh, helps you get this intuition and uh, it it even allows you to take a decision right so if you want to make such a sentence even more uh, a bit less insincere uh, you can you can choose you can pl- probably choose some other choice of words instead of these mm. so uh, it helps you take decisions or it helps you truly understand what the model is looking at when it is trying to make a prediction so thank you so much uh, we'll see each other in the next lecture but hope you really understood how lime is going to help you in such kind of data set because text based data set is becoming more and more popular since the advent of gpts and uh, nlp uh, different nlp frameworks so just try this out there are so many different data sets on kaggle uh, just try this out or you can run this notebook itself which i'll be sharing the link of uh, this notebook uh, in the description so thank you so much and uh, we'll see in the next lecture